Um, so first of all, we're going to start with road safety. So the rollout of the new Vanguard road safety team, uh, we know is at full pace, and I think is going to provide really great reassurance to the public. And it's something that I think I, I know our team and I'm really excited to see. Um, and people do feel that roads are becoming increasingly dangerous, particularly post pandemic. We're certainly seeing traffic. I know I'm seeing traffic on the M25 on my commute in the morning um, back up to it certainly feels like pre pandemic levels. Surrey Police, of course, isn't the first force um, to run this kind of initiative. It was done in, in, in North Yorkshire, who undertook a similar piece of work um, last year. Um, have these areas seen improvements in, in KSI data? Um, so uh, KSI killed or seriously injured. So what, one of the things that we monitor uh, around road safety is to look at all of those uh, in, uh, incidents where somebody's killed or seriously injured. And of course, a serious injury can be absolutely uh, life changing for uh, for people and 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 their, and their families. Um, and that Vanguard team is tackling those contributory factors um, uh, uh, to those accidents. So, they, I mean, you may have seen some national news this week with um, uh, one of the na national leads who works on road safety and particularly on speeding, uh, talking about the way that the police service are more accurately. Re re um, recording speeding data now to give greater insight and uh, their prediction as the national lead is that we'll probably show from that new data collection that speeding is more of a contributory factor than we thought it was in the, in the past because as our drink and drugs and mobile phone usage and so on uh, so this team which has come through additional uh, uh, money and support of police and crime commissioner and local taxation uh, is to do exactly this um, we're very early days with it and of course it, it is in addition to um, some great teams that we already have so under our um, uh, road safety partnership which is not just policing but um, uh, with local authorities as well we we already issue in excess of 90,000 uh, ticket enforcements uh, each year from the systems uh, across the county that's the automated systems uh, so speed enforcement red red uh, the red x cameras on the motorway that sort of thing uh, and in addition to that, we have uh, fantastic uh, community speed watch uh, schemes as well, um, uh, with huge numbers of volunteers involved in that. So if that's something that you would like to get involved in in your area, then uh, please do uh, get in touch with the commissioner's office or direct with uh, with Surrey Police on that. Uh, and we have local casualty reduction officers as well that are able to listen to those um, uh, uh, local concerns. Um, so uh, just a, a few of the things uh, that we do, but we look forward to seeing real benefit from the from the Vanguard team too. Great, thanks very much, Gavin. Um, and we go to Ellie now, who has been watching as the questions are coming in. Ellie, we have our first question from the public. We do. We've got quite a lot on road safety. So the first one is from Nick in East Surrey. What are you doing to introduce updates on public submissions of evidence and specifically to increase prosecutions? Yeah, uh, very very topical question. If you uh, um, follow uh, Surrey Police on um, on Twitter in particular. You may have seen exchanges uh, in um, in recent days from a, um, a really active member of our local community who got in touch online and also wrote, also wrote to us about exactly this issue. Uh, the, so the submission of of evidence for, from uh, you know cycle helmet cams from uh, from dash cams and so on uh, about offending behaviour on the roads. Uh, I think it's fair to say that this was a a great example where that sort of public scrutiny of what we're doing has lifted a stone on something that we can do better. Um, uh, so um, we've, we've, as a result of that that contact, we've already looked at what other forces are doing, and uh, Nevin particularly has been um, looking at this over over recent days. So I'll ask him to come in in, in a second. Um, but uh, that uh, footage is is really really valuable to us, particularly from an early intervention point of view. Uh, and we're, we're well set up to be able to receive this sort of material now because in the last few years we've invested in a, a, a digital platform for all digital evidence with um, uh, Sussex Police and also Thames Valley and Hampshire Police because as you, as you can imagine and I mentioned other types of investigation earlier that the volume of this type of material is expanding uh, you know almost we're almost week by week so we've got to we've got to keep up with the time and I think uh, as we as we found out recently, um, we perhaps haven't moved fast enough with the times, and never really want to update a little bit more on that. Yes, um, yeah, thank you. So um, we're seeing uh, just over ten percent of the uh, footage being uh, passed to us from members of the public, um, and some of it's really good quality. And it's fair to say, as the chief said, that this is highlighted that we we took an approach that was too risk averse, um, and actually um, there. 
there may be some defences, but the approach we're going to be taking now is that actually we're going to be looking to take some action, uh, and that will extend from a warning letter to a notice of intended prosecution, depending on the nature of the evidence and the offence that um, that, uh, that gives us. Um, the approach that had been taken was that without being spoken to by an officer, how, how could we prove or disprove the offence? Well, actually, that, that was a risk-averse approach and we got that wrong. Uh, and that's going to change from now on. And we know that using mobile phone in a car is what one of what we call the fatal five um, primary reasons that, um, that crashes uh, happen on a road. So it is something that we take seriously and I'm grateful for the feedback we've had. The, um, the gentleman who actually pointed that out to us has been invited in to see how we do make our decisions. Um, and um, and we've um, we fed back to him exactly what we're going to be doing. We've had a very positive uh, response from him and from others in the cycling community, um, and we welcome that. We want to work with you. Brilliant. That's really good to hear. Ellie, you've got another question for us? Yeah, there's lots on this and, and dash cams and submissions. Um, Ian from Rygate says, can we have an Operation Snap um, to help with the... Um, to help enable submissions, the roads team can't be everywhere. Um, and Martin from Elmbridge says, how are Surrey Police dealing with those complaints um, that are submitted via dash cam footage? And has there been an increase in reports and prosecutions as a result of those submissions? So I think the answer to that is 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 not yet. So we we do we we have, we're, obviously I've had some prosecutions from it, but I think what we've what we've learned uh, recently is we've not been as, as successful at in Surrey as some other forces have. So we definitely want to learn from that whether that results in an operation like Operation Snap or an approach that best uh, suits uh, suits Surrey, we'll be certainly working on that over the coming weeks. Okay, that's great. Ellie, you got one more? Yep, um, I'm going to do a double one again. This one comes up quite a lot um, when Lisa and I are out and about, so it's a good one. So Nick from East Surrey says, what are you doing to tackle pavement parking and proliferation of yellow line parking? Um, and sort of in line with that, Mark from Guildford says, why does Surrey please do nothing about cars parked on pavements, forcing children and people, people with buggies to walk in the road? Yeah, okay. Um, we always get questions on, mm. on uh, parking. Uh, I'd like to put this in the context of all the other issues that we've been talking about this evening from uh, dealing with domestic abuse and child abuse, trying to get more people before the courts, dealing with uh, killed and seriously injured and so on. Uh, parking was decriminalised in 1991 um, and yet people still naturally turn to policing as the, uh, as the agency of first resort to deal, to deal with parking. It's not actually been a policing responsibility since the early 90s. It was passed over to local authorities. Officers can intervene if they believe it's a, a sort of dangerous or a willful obstruction. And of course, then we'll try and locate the driver and get the vehicle moved and so on. Um, uh, and of course, we can issue a, a fixed penalty notice in those uh, circumstances. And if we end up having to seize the vehicle, then there's a big release fee of 150 quid and uh, 20 quid a day if we have to store the car and so on. So there, there are consequences for people. Uh, but th we will first look to uh, local authorities who were given the powers and um, uh, the resource into to um, to de deal with these deal with these issues. Um, if there's something particularly dangerous, then we're more than happy to work in collaboration with our local authority colleagues uh, to try and help with it. But it's not predominantly a policing responsibility to deal with uh, routine parking issues. That's great, thank you. And it's something, as Ellie says, that we, we get asked a lot, um, including by councillors. So um, it's really good to have a clarification there. Um, I've got one, and, and it's it's clear, I think, from everything that we've heard, that the public you know, really see robust enforcement generally as, as a really important part of successful roads placing. And I was out and about um, over the Easter weekend with some of our roads officers and some of the engagement and education um, programmes that they do. I mean, can you give us a, a better sense of the direct benefits that we see um, from educational campaigns? Yeah, sure. I mean, um... Uh, our campaigns, we uh, do evaluations on the model and for the levels of engagement, but ultimately we're trying to get to that uh, behaviour change as well. And I think we also need to see campaigns in the same light as some of the corrective courses that people go on. So, you know, I, I mentioned the um, the 90,000 or so uh, um, uh, um, uh, prosecutions that are issued through the uh, safety camera partnership. So that that's in a, in a typical year. In a typical year, there's also about 30,000 people go through the sort of those education programs, which of course is a, an intensive, um, uh, 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 you know, ed education if you if you have sort of transgressed, as it were. But officers often at the roadside can take the key messages from those intensive uh, educational sessions and do them there and then at the roadside. 
sometimes playing back little uh, clips of footage that they might have ca captured on, on their in-car video and so on. Uh, so motorists can see the see the behaviour for, uh, for for themselves, uh, and that sometimes just in that moment, it's what needs people to um, uh, to uh, to really think about their behaviour. The other um, uh, fantastic um, uh, well campaign and educational program that we do is Safe Drive, Stay Alive, uh, led by our fantastic colleagues in the fire service, but contributed to by policing and other emergency services and our health colleagues and so on. Uh, across the county, and that that is targeted at, at, at new drivers, uh, predominantly sixth form age uh, students. But of course, one of the things that they do is go home and um, uh, remind their parents, uh, who are their often passengers, with about about driving be driving behaviour. Um, uh, so uh, you know, it's this this stuff really does have an effect. But having said all that, um, Commissioner, as you were saying earlier, we have sadly started to see post-pandemic some increases uh, in those killed and seriously injured uh, statistics which are life-changing so I would, I'd ask everybody to uh, think about behaviour on the roads, think about being tolerant to others. We were chatting just a moment ago about the sort of dash cam footage which often comes from uh, cyclists uh, and that sort of cooperation on the road uh, particularly you've seen the publicity a couple of months ago about the changes to the highway code mm -hmm. Uh, and the sort of hierarchy of um, uh, if we're motorists, particularly commercial uh, motorists, and we do we do have a, a team that looks specifically uh, at that. In fact, I saw some social media footage early today by the specialist team that target commercial vehicles uh, to make sure they're safe on the road. Uh, we do have a, an increase in responsibility uh, if we are motorists. Yeah, thank you. And I know that Safe Drive, Stay Alive program is really important um, and makes a massive difference to, to young people in schools and of course to their parents and after two years online it's it's finally back um, in person this year and I would encourage everybody um, who is eligible to take part in it and I know we, we saw a tragic death sadly over the weekend of a, um, of a young person on the road so anything that anyone can do to prevent that is really important. Ellie back over to you for more questions around roads. Yeah we've got a lot coming in on speeding okay. um, so what are you doing to tackle speeding on A and B roads um, why are there not more speed traps or other speeding measures put in place, especially around schools and other high risk areas? Um, and what is being done to control speeding and stop excessively noisy cars, specifically in Godalming, where speeding, deliberate over revving and backfiring from modified cars is a bit of an issue? Yep, okay. Um, uh, so on uh, on speeding, as I, as I mentioned, the, there are an enormous number of prosecutions on that, it's sort of 90,000 a year, on that, and that will cover some of the A road networks. On the B road networks, that's where uh, we're reliant on those um, reports to come into the casualty reduction officers um, uh, so they can, um, uh, you know, look at those sort of patterns and trends, uh, put out monitoring equipment. In fact, uh, on my sort of weekend run on, on Saturday morning, I ran past a location near to me where I can see that the team have put out uh, monitoring equipment to do uh, speed uh, ser um, uh, surveys. Uh, and um, that sometimes helps with the engineering changes that might uh, that might be needed. Uh, and of course, um, people can give um, feedback to the Surrey County Council uh, on the website on um, on road on speed on speed limits. Uh, and often, um, local communities do come together uh, to report um, uh, concerns. Um, the um, the casualty reduction officers have a, a really good knowledge of the road network in their in their local area and more than happy to work with local residents and community speed watch volunteers which i touched on earlier uh, to help tackle those very lo localized um issues on the noise we do the the, team, the specialist teams now do have some uh noise monitoring equipment um it's um uh, our experience along with colleagues in sussex as well who've been leading the way on some of this work um, is that the noise monitoring equipment is difficult to do uh, on its own in isolation for a prosecution but often it adds to the evidence uh, for the prosecution of events or adds to the evidence in order to do a, a sort of roadside intervention around um, education uh, work uh, so we so we can do specific operations in low locations using the noise monitoring equipment as well as speed monitoring equipment. Okay, thank you Gavin, no, it's really important and again something that's raised frequently. I think we've got one more question 
around roads before we move on to young people? It's sort of linked into young people, yeah. so it's a good segue. Um, Jeremy from, El from Elmbridge, what do the police plan to do about illegal use of e-scooters and people who ride bikes on the pavement? Yeah, okay, uh, I'll take those as two sort of separate issues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, by, by the pavement, you'll see police use a lot of discretion on there because there's a, of course, there's a great deal of difference between uh, somebody helping their child learn to ride uh, in the local area that's actually not posing a risk to anybody but keeping the child safe while they're there to ride a bike uh, and somebody um, scooting down a pavement at inappropriate speed that's a risk to um, it's a risk to pedestrians. So with bikes on the pavement you will see officers exercise their discretion as I'm sure you would you would expect. Uh, with e-scooters uh, the legislation means that you need insurance and you need a driving license to use these things and um, uh, we, we do uh, seize quite a number. In fact, I think uh, in the recent 12 months, we've seized 97 of these e-scooters, um, uh, la largely from people not uh, having the insurance to use them. So we, we will take enforcement action against them. Uh, I think there's a broader question for us here as a, as a society and a community. I know there are trials going on at other places in the UK. Uh, and of course, we're all looking for green, sustainable transport. And I think in future, uh, small battery powered vehicles are probably going to be what we're going to have to um, uh, all, adjust, all adjust to. But at the moment, with the current legislation, um, uh, we do take enforcement action. Um, and if you're concerned, uh, particularly if you see sort of patterns of behaviour uh, with them being used in an antisocial way, and we do, for example, uh, receive reports of them being used in drug running, for example, with some of that sort of county lines activity. Uh, then we definitely want to know and uh, the local teams uh, can target uh, particular areas so we can take that enforcement action. Brilliant, thank you. And that does bring us, as Ellie said, quite nicely onto work um, around youth engagement. I know that our youth engagement officers have been going out there and working really, really hard.